Superman issue twenty six. Brian Michael Bendis uh, with Ivan Reese on the on the art. Uh, you read the last issue. This. You, did, were you not excited enough to come back and find out? The the last issue of this, which I, I, sh- I should point out, you and Matt also universally agreed was one of the worst issues of the book. I don't know if we went that far, but sure, we had we had critiques. Yes, some pretty major problems. Yes. Oh yeah, I think you had another point to make. That's why I was, I was. Oh, you've muted yourself. That's what's happened. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, you're back. Now. <laughs> that, that was a that was a hardware glitch. Uh, okay. No, some pretty major problems in in the last issue that you two would also not a fan of. So why would I come back for this? Yeah, I'm more curious. I don't know. Uh, there's a hint at the start of the book uh, with Superman fighting the you know the villain that was introduced last issue. Uh, chaos happening. But we then jump back, and you know it's you know for all the critiques of the last issue, which almost entirely, I mean, you had some other critiques, but me and Matt, all of our critiques were entirely on how they chose to introduce the villain, and it was all that stuff that was sort of you know heavily featured throughout the whole issue. Here, and the stuff that I love what Ben's does with Superman is all the character pieces, all the little moments. Superman talking to Lois about going to see Doctor Fate for therapy. And talking about how stressed he is, and they have this really romantic little moment about how she kind of like stabilizes him, and he, she's always done that for him ever since he met her. Uh, and they have this romantic little beat. And he, you know, he hears uh, Ka- Kalex like sends a hologram into the room. He's like, "Hey, there's something, it's fortress. You must come." <laughs> and Lois is cracking wiki witty banter throughout. Uh, but basically, something's coming towards the Earth, and it's the villain, right? He's, he's just making a beeline for it, but he's he's, he's got 14 hours before it gets there. So he goes to wake up Jimmy, who's been staying in the fortress uh, for the last little bit. Uh, that's that's been previously established, and it says, "Okay, let's go back to the planet." And you know, th- this deals with more of the stuff. Some of my favorite stuff that Bennis has done is the whole revealing who he is and just how characters interact and, and how they re- respond to it. And we have Jimmy here still calling him Superman. He's like, "Hey, you can call me Clark, you know." And he's like, "Yeah, I don't know. I didn't feel right." And he's like, "What about Cal?" And he's like, "Ah, that's even weirder kind of thing." But when he goes back to the planet. Um, and he, I think it's Lombard who comes up and is basically, like, are we safe? Like, with you here? Like, you know, go on, like, you know, like, how, and one of the arguments that kept coming up before was that everyone kind of knew people who Superman cared about were at the planet anyway, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. And, but Superman, he reveals that there's actually some, some tech that's been installed in the building, uh, much like the, the Hall of Justice and a couple of other key locations, he says that it's been designed to withstand certain things because it's a prime target. Uh, and the only place that's safer on Earth is maybe the Batcave. Uh, to which, you know, I, th- I think, uh, is it Trish or someone? No, it's, it's Lombard who says, okay, what's a Batcave? <laughs> I just know what a Batcave is. Which I have to ag- agree. Sometimes I actually dislike how, like, average citizens seem to know what a Batcave is in the, in the context of Batman. Because why would they know that he's got a cave? Full of stuff. I get why the other heroes know about it. They've been there or they've heard about it. I mean, it. I think it's relatively self explanatory as well, though, in context of sure. the situation here. Like, they yeah. might be like, wait, he hasn't? Like, you know, that's the name of it, but it, it, it kind of functionally explains yeah. itself. Well, yeah, but this works because they're not even talking about Batman. He just mentions Batcave oh, okay. kind of like off no, Fair enough then. Because he's just talking about safe locations and he's like, what's a Batcave? <laughs> you know, outside of just being a cave for bats, which is the obvious answer to that question. Um, but so it, it's got all these little things with them kind of like questioning and being worried and uh, it brings up the Lana interview Trish is mad that he gave an interview to her instead of uh, herself but then of course this being is arriving on Earth it's coming straight for the planet <laughs> making the, the previous conversation about it being safe kind of funny um, but he you know rips open the shirt flies off to deal with it and everyone's like I'm still not used to that and there's some gorgeous like layouts here of Superman flying into space and like sort of taking this thing head on, um, and he tries to communicate. He he tries to communicate verbally. He says in his mind, like I'm opening my mind up telepathically, you know, so you can if you if you're a telepath, there's no blocks. You can communicate with me. He tries multiple languages. There's a gorgeous page of them falling through the clouds in the sky, and they're basically going straight for the Daily Planet building, right? And it's it's kind of this thing where all of the concern in the previous sequences was all about them thinking, are we safe being here with everyone knowing that you're Superman and you're in the building? And they're falling straight for the, the globe. And then we turn the page and everyone in the building is all ducked for cover. And they're like, wait, nothing's happened. We're okay. What's going on? 
And then we cut to the Phantom Zone. So something that was put into the Daily Planet recently uh, is that kind of like a, a seatbelt, I guess, or maybe not a seatbelt, like a like a, like a, the, the, the airbag in a car, where if there's something that's going to hit the planet, that's the impact's enough to destroy it or cause like a rever- you know, d- damage that would be too much and kill everyone inside. Basically, there's like an automatic like portal to the Phantom Zone that's going to open <laughs> to save it. <laughs> so Superman and the villain from last issue, whose name I cannot remember, and it's not mentioned here, so just alien dude from last issue. Uh, are in the Phantom Zone, and again, he tries to communicate, he talks to it in multiple Earth language, he tries Kryptonian, he tries everything he can, uh, but the cliff fire is just this, this thing, he's really strong, fires a blast of energy at him and has him pinned down to be continued. Um, I enjoy this issue a lot, I think the action is really fun just because the art's so good. Uh, it doesn't bog down in who this villain is, which is why the last issue was such a slog to get through. But my favourite stuff as always is the quiet moments with Lois, it's the quiet moments with Jimmy and the others in the, the planet, them reacting to who he is, we're still dealing with the fallout of like them knowing who he is. The fact that the fact that he even walks out of the like, planet without glasses on, he's just you know, he walks in and anyway, in a shirt and tie, but he's not got glasses on. And I think one of them says, Wait, why are you wearing a suit? And he's like, Because I'm at the office. <laughs> this is my day job. I'm not wearing my I'm not wearing a Superman suit here. That's, that's not inappropriate. What are you talking about? So, all that stuff I really enjoy. And I think this was a, a nice bounce back after the last issue, which I do think... I loved the Lana stuff last issue, but the, everything with the alien introduction, just... It was, like, something that could have been done in, like, two or three pages that droned on with tons and tons of, like, bubbles and text for a whole subplot that didn't need to be a whole subplot. Uh, so, you know. Uh, I, I'm far more positive on this issue of Superman and uh, I'm excited to see how this is, because we know this is kind of going to be the last arc now, or, uh, at least it's, it seems to be given that he's ended his run I, th- yeah. I think it is, I yeah. think the in the solicits it kind of still had this is a, something mm. to do with the House L was the title of the arc I think um, that's the, the, end, the, the name of the last arc so I think okay. it is that uh, so, yeah, very good uh that much more positive, I, I would happily give this a strong 8 out of 10. Uh, but Superman, uh, if you like Bendis' typical style, uh, I, I think you'll enjoy it. Mm-hmm.